this age of new normal, online is not your only option. Because new normal means new learning modalities and new learning possibilities. Let Dibal make learning offline possible with Smart Class. Smart Class contains pre-made daily modules sequenced according to DepEd's budgeted teaching and learning calendar. Each module has a specific lesson duration and has day markers to guide parents and teachers in the asynchronous learning of learners. Inside the modules available in Smart Class, you will find the following elements. First, learning competencies are identified in the module openers. Kickstarters are available to test students' prior knowledge on the subject matter. This set of activities, found at the beginning of each lesson, may also serve as motivational activities. Parents of preschool to grade 2 students will also find notes to parents which contain tips and pointers on how they can guide their child while learning at home. Redefine your student's learning experience with the integration of augmented reality technology into images and illustrations available in Smart Class, making learning more interactive and exciting. At the end of each module, Long Quiz is also available to assess students' understanding of the lesson. Smart Class also features Wrap Up, a lesson ender activity that applies the constructivism theory of learning. In Wrap Up, students are expected to summarize the lesson on their own using a graphic organizer. You may also evaluate the quality of your students' learning by letting them practice their learning in real life through GRASP's formatted performance tasks. The content of Smart Class is designed for the entire academic year, and it is available for five major subjects. All aligned with DepEd's K-12 curriculum, and covers the most essential learning competencies prescribed by DEPL. Secure your own copy of Smart Class before classes open. Contact marketing at dibalgroup.com to know more. Good day, Kavibal, and welcome to our Facebook Live learning session. For the discussion today, the topic will be on technology-driven teaching strategies in enhancing learning competencies. Before we begin, take note of the following reminders. Make sure you are registered to the webinar to have your e-certificate of participation. Visit certificate.vibalgroup.com to generate your proof of attendance. Place your questions on the comment box allotted during the session and they will be addressed by our speaker later on. Share the video using hashtag LearnAsOnePH as our official hashtag to our Vibal webinars. Experience learning, Kavibal! And now, to proceed with our webinar this morning, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our distinguished speaker today. Our speaker today is a master teacher, speaker, and researcher in the Philippines. He is a multi-awarded winning Filipino master teacher, speaker, and researcher from, Pam from Pampanga. He's a senior high school master teacher at San Matias National High School, school division office of Pampanga, Region 3 of the Department of Education, with over two decades of teaching experience. Leonilo is a Dangal Bayan award-winning educator. He is also the recipient of Asian Achiever Award 2019, Gawad Pat National Award in 2019, Outstanding Research Advocate of the Philippines Award in 2019, and Most Outstanding Teacher Award in 2018. As a research advocate, it has been his advocacy to promote the culture of research by developing school-based research management in the region. His network with other international organizations became a bridge in, or in hosting international research conferences in the Singapore, Bangkok, Philippines, and Vietnam. His love for less fortunate moved him to conduct studies and advocacies for community development in the depressed areas and initiated literary and faith program to select children of Makabebe, Pampanga. As an, inter as an educational leader, 
He has written contextualized curriculum modules for values education for junior high school and written assessment and evaluation tool for the senior high school in the Department of Education. He holds a bachelor degree in education, major in religious education, and master's in religious studies, catechetics, cum laude, in Don Bosco Center of Studies, Paranaque City. He took a Master of Arts in Education in De La Salle University, Desmarinas. He received two honorary doctorate in Philosophy Institution in Brazil. He is preparing for his final defense on emerging model on promoting and enhancing research productivity in basic education for his Doctor of Philosophy in Educational Management at the University of the Assumption, San Fernando, Pampanga. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome Dr. Leonilo Capulso. I'm Jill. Hello, good morning. Ma'am Jill, can you hear me now? Yes, po, sir. You can be heard okay. po. Thank you. So, good morning, everyone. I am uh, Mr. Capulso from San Matias National High School, and I hope. So, for today, we're going to discuss technology-driven teaching strategy in enhancing learning competencies. So for our objective for today, we will discuss the learning principles and theories uh, that are applicable in technology-driven teaching and learning modalities, uh, explain the Dale's Cone experience, the TPOC and Azure models, and discuss strategies in enhancing learner competencies through technology integration. To start with, I want to share this uh, post from you, uh, I mean from the post of Bishop Abilio David in his Facebook page, which says, uh, before they said that no phone inside the school. Today, school is inside the phone. In September 4, there was the Department of Education reminding the teachers to limit the screen time of students attending online distance learning to about uh, one to, to four hours every day. Uh, it depends on the grade level, of course. In September 10, the Secretary of the Department of Education says that modular learning can be very expensive and has a big effect on the environment. So it's uh, actually a challenge to all school leaders to approach and to adapt online learning. So before we proceed, let's try to have a look at what research say about technology and education. In one study conducted by Raja and Nagasobra, it says that the use of technology has made the process of teaching and learning all the more enjoyable. Another study uh, said the, the study found out that modern technology impacts learning both positively and negatively. Another study by Salvation says that the type of smartphone application and how they use it determine their level of knowledge and overall grade achievement. 
However, the impact is mediated by the amount of time spent during such an applications. So this indicates that when more time is spent on using educational application, there are more chances of enhancing level of knowledge and classroom achievement. However, when more time is spent on social application, the academic competence and classroom achievement will reduce also, although the student may be good in social trend. Now, with the new normal that we are experiencing, with the many things we are expected to do, we really have to embrace technology. And technology indeed is changing the dynamics of education especially the relationship between teachers and students. Andrew Kim, a, science, a, a researcher, once said that educators and school administrators should reshape educational spaces in providing a better learning experience to support educational evaluation. So what is now a technology-based learning? So it constitutes learning via electronic technology, including internet, intranet, satellite broadcast, audio and video conferencing, bulletin boards, chat rooms, web chats, and cd -ROM. Most of them actually are very familiar to us even before the opening of the school year because we started already embracing this online mechanism in trying to have some dry run for our online delivery. So it encompasses related terms as, as online learning and web-based learning. Sometimes they are interchanged in our use to discussing online modality. So before we proceed to different strategies that we will be discussing, let's try to have some review on learning principles and theories applied in technology-driven teaching and learning models. This will help us understand which uh, technological devices or other technological mechanism will be related, will be applicable to our online classroom. So here we will be discussing three learning theories and models in order for us to um, to, to discuss our our uh, strategies that we will be having. Okay, the first one is Dale's Cone of Experience. So if you try to look at the screen, there is a, there is a triangle and uh, the percentages are given from the lowest to the highest depending on the hierarchy. So they'll believe that an individual learner retain information when it is executed or put into practice compared to the one which only heard, read, or observed. So in the 21st century, this kind of experience learning or action learning or learning by doing. Okay, so how do we incorporate cone of experience in teaching? So if you try to look at again, okay, 
So okay. if you try to look so if at, you try uh, to look the, at uh, the the you you see there from the higher uh, hierarchy is the reading. Okay, uh, Ma'am Jill, I'm okay now. Yes, po, sir. Thank you. Po. Okay. So, if students are learning by reading only manuscripts or books, the students are more likely to retain only 10% of what he read compared to presenting stimulating real experiences which will provide students 90% of what we say and do. So this is actually a comparison between a passive and active way of discussing. So this learning cone of, of Dale is actually a reminder for us teachers what kind of strategy are we going to adopt in applying to our online classes and later on to our face-to-face -face classes. So based on the chart, the topmost level refers to the learning from information, verbal symbols like listening, okay? Um, which in effect the least effective method compared to the one at the bottom presenting and stimulating real experiences which will give 90% of what we see and though that students more likely will remember. So these experiences provide at the bottom part of those that are related to real life situation. Sa madaling salita, Mas matututo yung mga bata kapag ang mga tinuturo ng isang guru ay may kinalaman sa kanyang totoong pang-araw-araw na buhay. So lahat ng gagawin dapat ni teacher, may it be online or virtual or face-to-face, -face, should be related to the life experiences of the students. But how do we do this now in our virtual classroom? So, as educators, the movement in a downward direction implies the higher retention of learning among students. So, if you are looking at the triangle, the challenge to us teachers is to focus more on strategies that will engage students, may it be virtual or face-to-face, -to, -face, to the learning that is happening inside the classroom, mid the classroom virtual or uh, actual classroom. So it also suggests that instruction and learning experiences of students will become more relevant and significant to learners if they are incorporated and involved in the process. So kahit tayo ngayon ay nasa online classroom, it is a challenge to us teachers to still allow our students to collaborate with other students or integrate their ideas in our online discussion. So this is now a call for an action learning, an action learning mechanism. So using action learning mechanism as a strategy in teaching, this will yield for students higher retention, which is actually 90% of the retention model. So compared to the instruction where students were only asked, for example now, many of the, the schools are only uh, utilizing printed modules and students are only using modules. So this is good because this is what we can provide for now. <coughs> Sorry, but we have to realize that will only constitute the lower uh, from our uh, printed module. If we have other strategy to, to engage students, it will assure a higher engagement from our students. So this reality implies that perceptual learning styles, which use more sensoric channels, <coughs> sorry for that, will bring about higher chances of retention of learning. So as the 21st century instructor, instructor as we are, we make our students more engaged in reality or realistic experience will enhance more effective learning style. So ang challenge nito sa atin ngayon, paano natin ngayon gagawin dito sa distance learning or online learning. So using technology, we try to imitate reality using tools like um, 
virtual tools to bring students closer to reality will surely enhance their teaching and learning experiences. For example, we have a virtual classroom, we have a virtual museum, we have a virtual laboratory. So by using simulations, we allow our students to interact with these mechanisms and with their classmates and even with their teachers. So this will assure us a higher retention percentage. So Dr. Anderson gave us some guide questions to ask teachers in trying to adapt the cone of experience model. One, where will students experience with the instructional resource fit in the cone? So as teachers, what kind of experiences can we provide to our students that will enable our students to engage more to our discussion? How far is it removed from reality? So the challenge for us now is to make our students feel the, the intimacy, the relationship to us, even though we are separated by the screen. So if possible, the teacher can maximize virtual reality, just like what we are doing now during this pandemic as an alternative for direct contact with another phenomenon. May it be to the lesson we are discussing or to the tools we are adapting. What kind of learning experiences do you want to provide to the classroom, to the students? So let not this distance learning or online learning be a hindrance for students to engage to us and to their peers. How does this instructional resource augment the information supplies in book? So Bival publication, for example, we have, uh, have a lot of mechanism where students could actually engage to, to text through the online uh, modalities and like uh, the, the activity sheets and other uh, mechanism that Viva Publication is providing. The site is actually provided before I started this discussion. What and how may senses can students use to learn this instructional material? Sa madaling salita, mas natututo ang isang estudyante, even virtual learning, kapag maraming senses ang nagagamit. So the interaction now may not only be between the student and the teacher and the classmates. Interaction could also be diverted to interaction with family members where the, the discussions, the theories that the students learned will be applied in the classroom uh, situation. So does the instructional material enhance learning? So this will be our guide questions as we try to develop our learning materials using the cone of experience model as our guide. So sa madaling salita, ang isang estudyante ay mas natututo siya anumang subject ang kanyang pinag-aaralan kapag mas maraming senses yung nagagamit, kapag mas nai-engage yung bata compared to the one student who just read the manuscript, the the module being presented. That is why, for example, in our school division office, aside from the printed module given to the students, advisors created already Facebook groups and accounts so that when parents and students have questions, there will be feedback mechanism. Another engagement will also be available. So another model that we will be looking at which is also connected to technology, is the technology, pedagogy, and content knowledge, or the TIPAC model. So if you try to look at the, the diagram or the, the, the picture, you have here the, the three important elements which are mentioned, no? the content knowledge, the technological knowledge, and the pedagogical knowledge. And then the interaction between pedagogy and content is called pedagogical content knowledge. The interaction between content and technology is technological content knowledge. The interaction between pedagogy and technology is technological pedagogical knowledge. At the middle of that is the whole technology pedagogical content model. So this is another model that we 
will try to examine in order to consider the strategies that we will be using. Sa madaling salita, kapag gumagawa ang isang teacher ng isang lesson in online or even distance learning, these three important elements should be incorporated. Okay, so let's start. So the TIPAC model was introduced by Punya Mizura and Matthew Kohler from Michigan University. So this is actually a technology integration framework that identifies three types of knowledge instructors need to combine for successful education technology integration. These are technological, pedagogical, and content knowledge. <coughs> Sorry. So sa madaling salita, kapag ako ha, alimbawa ay nagtuturo ng practical research to, I'm teaching in San Matias National High School. I'll be teaching also in City Colleges of San Fernando. Some of my college students who are trying to become teachers are also listening. So they, they would realize that when you try to conceptualize a lesson in a virtual classroom or in an online classroom, integrating technology, these three important knowledge should be present and should properly integrate. So technology, pedagogy, and content. So technology pertains to the tools, pedagogy pertains to the strategies, and content knowledge pertains to the expertise of the teacher. So this explains how content, what is being taught, and pedagogy, how the teacher presents the lesson, must form the basis of any technological integration as presented in the screen. So this framework is very timely, especially during this time of pandemic, when online learning was identified as one of the modalities of instruction. This was also identified in the uh, basic education learning continuity plan by the Department of Education and even by higher education institutions. So according to the proponents of this model, there are specific technological tools, hardware, software, applications with information, literature, uh, instruction, and will help the learners learn, understand the subject. So to do this, the three types of knowledge, technological knowledge, pedagogical knowledge, and content knowledge are combined and recombined within the TPAC model. So the first model is the content knowledge. This pertains to teachers' own knowledge of the subject matter. So if you are teaching mathematics, for example, you should know the content of mathematics. If you are teaching science, you should know the content of science. So this includes the concepts, theories, evidence, and organizational frameworks connected to the content you are discussing within a particular subject matter. This may differ according to the subject and the grade level handled by the teacher. Of course, the delivery is very important, which will be discussed in a while. So this is it, <clears throat> the pedagogical knowledge. So the teacher's knowledge of practice, processes and method is being delivered or in delivering the subject matter and learning objectives in order to provide a responsive teaching and learning experience to students. So madaling salita, hindi sapat na alam mo yung topic mo. Maaaring ang galing-galing mo nga dun sa topic na, na ituturo mo, pero hindi mo siya na, na ipapaliwanag ng maayos, hindi siya na, na translate sa estudyento. So learning actually did not happen yet. So this kind of pedagogical knowledge includes the purposes, the values, and the aims of education, including understanding different learning styles, classroom management, lesson planning, and assessment. So abang ginagawa natin yung ating lesson, dapat malinaw sa atin kung ano ba yung learning style na mayroon sa klase natin para yung paraan ng pagtuturo natin at kung paano natin ituturo ay nakaka-integrate na properly dun sa topic na mayroon tayo. Okay? So, even the, the assessment, paano ba natin i-assess yung, yung mga bagay na naituro natin, kagaya ngayon na nasa online learning tayo o nasa distance learning. Ang, ang ating 
pedagogy ba yung ating assessment ba ay kagaya lang ng ngayon dati when we give for example a quarter exam ganun pa din ba 50 item test multiple choice pa din ba so these realities should be considered in the pedagogical knowledge so as as teachers in collaboration with the school leader should really adopt a good mechanism in assessing the students learning particularly considering the difficulties in distance learning The third is the technological knowledge. Alam mo na kung ano yung ituturo mo, alam mo na kung paano mo siya ituturo. Sa ngayon, ano naman yung tool na pwede mong gagamitin, lalo-lalo na sa online learning. So technological knowledge describes the teacher's knowledge and ability to manipulate different technologies, technological tools associated with the resources. It includes understanding educational technology or the edtech, which is now very in because of the new normal. And the suitability of using, integrating them in teaching and learning experiences of the students. Of course, as we try to embrace technological uh, mechanism, we also have to consider, kaya ba ng estudyante? Anong, anong level ba sa technological knowledge ang pwede kong gamitin? We, we know well that there are areas in the country that uh, Wi-Fi connection is very challenging. That is why instead of enhancing learning competencies, it actually provides or brings about digital divide. So yung mga may, may, may internet mas natututo, yung walang internet lalong naiiwanan. So this is now the challenge of, of, of the teacher to try to gauge the capacity of the students in adapting technological mechanism. So, again, ma mahalaga yung tatlong uh, knowledge na pinag-uusapan natin dito sa TIPAC model. No? The, the technology, uh, pedagogy, and the content knowledge. But then again, this should be properly integrated. So, as mentioned earlier, the first integration will be between technology and pedagogy or we call the technological pedagogical knowledge. So this describes the relationship between the technological tools and specific pedagogical practices. It refers to teachers' understanding on how technology can change the teaching and learning experiences by introducing new pedagogy, pedagogy based on particular disciplines. Sa madaling salita, uh, itong topic na to ay ipapaliwanag ko sa ganitong paraan. Pero iisipin ko muna, ano ba yung angkop na teknolohiya, ano ba yung angkop na tool na pwede kong gagamitin na masusundan naman ng estudyante. I cannot just demand all my students to, to have tablets and to, to go to these websites. Lalong-lalo na yung iba nga kahit pangbili ng load ay nahihirapan. So I have to devise mechanism that would integrate my pedagogy and technological capacity of my students. Another integration is pedagogy and content. Kagaya sa nabanggit ko kanina, um, maaaring alam na alam ng guro yung topic. Pero paano niya ba ituturo? <coughs> Para maituro mo ng maayos, dapat alam mo din yung iba't ibang paraan ng pagkatuto ng estudyante. No? Kaya alam dapat natin yung learning uh, preference, yung learning style ng estudyante. I will elaborate that towards the last model that we will be discussing. So the purpose of this is to improve the teaching practices by creating stronger connection between content and pedagogy. So alam mo na kung ano yung ituturo mo, alam mo kung paano mo ituturo. Okay? At pangatlo, the integration between technological content or technology and the content, which is technological content knowledge. So this is the relationship and interaction among technologies and learning objectives. So dapat malinaw sa iyo, ano ba yung gusto mong ituro sa estudyante at kung paano mo ito ituturo. So this focuses on teachers' understanding of how technology and content can influence one another. So understanding how a particular subject matter can be delivered using varied educational technology offerings and the kind of tools that best fit to the subject area. So wag nating ipilit. May mga topic kasi kung minsan na mahirap siya gamitan ng ganitong tool. So that's also where the judgment of the teacher is necessary. So alamin muna natin, ano ba yung mga technological tools na pwedeng panggamitan ng mga uh, uh, tools na available online. So like 
for example, in, in using games, that I'll be discussing in a while, gamification, ano ba yung mga topic kung na pwede kong ipalaro sa mga bata while at the same time natututo sila? So, uh, that is the tipak model. Let's go to the third. No? The third is the Assure, which is an instructional design model. For those who are in the Department of Education, especially uh, for those who are doing their demonstration teaching, we normally adapt this uh, model in presenting our lesson because it will uh, help us uh, assess and the, the students' competencies also integrating technology. So the Azure model has six steps, uh, an instructional system design, which is geared towards helping teachers utilize technology and media in the classroom, following the six models that was identified. The aim of Azure model is to produce more effective teaching and learning, which is appropriate to students using technology. So the, the ASSURE is an acronym that stands for these important components. One, analyze learners. So the first thing that teachers should do is to analyze the learners. I will elaborate that in a while. Second, state objectives. What are your objectives for this lesson? Third, select instructional methods, media, and materials you will be using. After you select, you utilize the media and materials here you are already incorporating technology. Next, require learners' participation. That is why in the objective part, you must state what are students expected to do. And of course, evaluate the students' uh, competency. And from there, you have to revise the lesson if you think students' competency need to be reassessed. Now, let's go to the important steps. I will not elaborate this, but let's try to the most basic. When analyze learners, when teachers is drafting a lesson, when you try to analyze your students, so analyze students' attitudes, like what are their characteristics associated to learning outcome? So by understanding their students' attitude, like uh, ilan dito sa mga estudyante ko ang, ang verbal learners, asan dito yung kinesthetic, iba, asan dito yung mga estudyante ko na ganito yung kanilang pagkatuto. So in analyzing learners, you have to identify the learning styles of the students so that when you are drafting your lessons, this will be integrated. Then understanding students' attitude will help teachers determine appropriate strategies and resources to be adap adapted. So alam mo na ngayon, kapag kilala mo na yung estudyante, kung ano ba yung strategy na mas mainam at angkop dun sa kakayahan ng iyong estudyante. So general attributes of learners like age, academic abilities, gender, and interest. So yung pag-alam mo itong mga, mga karakteristik ng estudyante, mas sasakto doon sa mga pangangailangan ng estudyante ko. You should also know their prior uh, competencies. Ano na ba yung natutunan nila sa dating uh, pinag-aralan? Learning styles, as mentioned. Are they auditory? Are they visual? Are they tactile? Second, state standards and objectives. Of course, sa lahat naman ng ginagawa natin bilang guru, paano natin malaman kung uh, effective ba o successful yung pagtuturo natin, it will be based on our objective and standards. So, for example, in the Department of Education, as we embrace the milk, there are still standards and objectives that will be uh, observed. So, for example, now, in teachers of our division who are still in the learning delivery modalities, teachers are, are trained how to convert uh, their learning standards into objectives. That's why there is this unpacking of, of standards into learning objectives because this will help teachers to identify what are the best strategies to use. This objective can be used to assess the success of learners and let them know what they are expected to accomplish in the lesson. In, in trying to develop our objectives, our objectives should always be smart. We know well this one is supposed to be specific, measurable, attainable, result-oriented, and within the time. Uh, Sir Hatkert, uh, I suggested that objectives can also follow the ABC of forming uh, objectives. A, audience. So teacher should uh, put into his mind or her mind 
for whom is the objective intended? Sino ba ang makikinig? Ano bang grade level nila? Ano ba yung kanilang learning style? Behavior. What is the behavior or performance to be demonstrated? Uh, are they supposed to create a poem? Are they supposed to recite something? Or are they supposed to, to draw? Conditions. What are the conditions under which behavior or performance will be observed? Paano ba natin sila i-assess? And the degree. To what degree will the knowledge or skill be mastered? But because of the limitation of COVID-19, of the distance learning, that the degree of difficulty is also being uh, considered because we know well that students also have their other chores at home as they learn. No? So dapat ma ma malinaw yun sa atin. Hindi dapat sobrang mabigat yung mga binibigay natin na gawain sa estudyante para naman may panahon silang gawin ang iba pa nilang obligasyon sa bahay. And other studies, particularly in, in other countries, show that uh, exposure to, to, to gadgets, exposure to the screen can sometimes lead to psychological disorders. I have discussed this in my previous webinars when I discuss about digital detoxification or digital detox. So the third, select strategies, technologies, and media and materials. So the strategies, technologies, and materials that we will be choosing will be chosen by teachers should be relevant to the identified objective and standards. So yung strategy, kagaya ng sinabi ko, yung technology, yung mga gamit na ating gagamitin ay dapat konektado dun sa ating mga gustong gawin, sa ating objective and standards. These strategies can include, halimbawa, gagamit ba ako ng lecture, gagamit ba ako ng demonstration, or should I present them a video? Um, ngayon, usong-uso na online yung mga virtual library, yung mga simulation classes. Uh, there are different modalities uh, which are being provided for this. Bibal Publication has a um, mechanism also where teachers and parents are trained at home in order to properly guide their students in trying to access this kind of mechanism. So collaboration or collaborative work and group discussion can be adapted between teacher and student, among students, or between teachers and uh, parents. So collaboration is actually premium in this kind of mechanism. So as facilitator of learning, teachers should pick student-centered strategies so discussion becomes more engaging. Sabi nga natin kasi ang, ang online learning can also be saturating as sci, uh, research would prove. That is why, as mentioned earlier, students should be more engaged. So teachers should um, present ways on engaging students. Um, San Fernando, Pampanga, for example, uh, particularly school division of San Fernando and even other divisions, when they try to use their TV-based instruction, they are actually trying to interact with students. No? They, they try to post questions and as if students and are, and are answering these questions and then try to affirm before they proceed to the next topic. The teacher, however, can demonstrate to the learners some skills that are necessary for a particular topic. So as much as we want students to to collaborate, may mga pagkakataon na kailangan si teacher muna yung gagawa. Maybe this is true to the lower level, to the primary uh, students when teachers have to demonstrate first the skill necessary and then later on the student will imitate. The technology, media, and materials that will be utilized by the tertiary should be consistent with the objective strategies. I mentioned this already. Okay, fourth, utilize technology media and uh, materials. Kapag uh, alam mo na kung anong gagawin, now you try to utilize this. But and in utilizing technology and media, according to Kurt, there should be five P's as your guide. First, preview. Bago mo gawin, ay, ipagawa sa bata. Subukan mo munang gawin. Try to plan ahead before using them. So that we know the glitches and other uh, help that students might be needing. Second, prepare the materials and technology. So dapat nakahanda na yung mga gagamitin natin bago tayo magsimula ng klase. Then prepare the environment. Hindi ba maingay? Naririnig ba tayo ng estudyante? Makakasunod ba sila? Then prepare the learners. Handa ba sila sa gagawin mo? That is why there napakahalaga dito yung preliminary activities. So i-prepare natin yung mga estudyante sa so mga gagawin natin. 
So we, we try to motivate them. Diba kung natatandaan niyo yung ating lesson planning, we always start with motivation. This is actually our way of preparing our students for our discussion and provide learning experience, which is actually very essential. Siguraduhin natin na sa buong dalawang oras sa isang araw, for example, depende doon sa inyong sinusunod ngayong new normal, dapat may, may learning experience na nangyari. At babalikan natin yung cone of experience, mas natututo ang mga estudyante kapag sila ay nag-i-engage. Kumpara sa kagaya nito na halimbawa, ako lang yung nagsasalita, but this is what the mechanism is requiring now. No? So we make it more engaging. And tip for this Azure model is require learners part no require learners participation. So paano mo na natututo sila? You ask them. So kaya napakahalaga yung formative assessment. So you could ask them as a form of review. So what do you learn so far? Uh, uh, you, you ask them to define some words you already defined in the class. This will help them retain what they are learning. So some ways to do this are to incorporate co uh, cooperative learning structures, questioning, having qu discussions, creating fun, hand-on acti hands activities, so on and so forth. So ang teacher tayo naman alam na alam natin kung paano natin ito gagawin. We, we could actually ask them to, to rephrase, we could ask them to give a one a one line and then explain or ask them to to draw what they learn from this discussion and then explain so this is our way of engaging students in the lesson and lastly for a sure model is evaluating and revising so how do we know that they know of course through our evaluation mechanism so we evaluate the impact of teaching on students learning but evaluation this time we could have summative evaluation or still formative evaluation but again we consider the the circumstances the environment so yung quiz ba natin yun pa din yung 1 to 20 1 to 30 1 to 10 multiple choice pa rin ba or um it would be for example at a two minute presentation or a one line answer it's up to the teacher as long as our evaluation is connected to the objective that we want to accomplish so Kurt provides the following guide so when we are evaluating. So did your lesson meet the learning objectives? Yun sinabi ko sa, sa, sa inyo kanina. Can this lesson be improved? O pwede pa ba natin mapaganda? Paano? Kung nakita natin na hindi sila masyado natuto, paano pa natin pagandahin yung lesson? Was your choice of materials, of media, effective? If not, what other materials can you use? Is it possible that other technologies, media, and materials would have made a better result? Then use that the next time. Okay. Now for the last part of our presentation, these are now five basic strategies to students uh, using technology. According to uh, Gupta, um, uh, Priyanha, uh, Priyanka Gupta. Uh, some of you are, are familiar with these strategies, but as I present this, let's try to recall those uh, theories and models that we just discussed so far the cone of experiences, the TIPAC model, and a sure model in trying to develop and presenting our discussion. So the first way or strategy in enhancing learning competencies is using multimedia, of course. Vivid images, video, instantaneous information, capture attention from students easily. If you try to go back to our discussion, kapag mas maraming senses yung nagagamit, mas nag-i-engage yung estudyante at mas natututo sila. Use various multimedia resources that add sync to your classroom sessions. But of course, hindi natin dapat ipilit kung hindi talaga kakayanin. So depende siguro sa klase. Limbawa, sa San Machas where I am teaching, may mga estudyante ako, may isang section that they are capable of online learning. So online kami. Doon naman sa iba, distance module or printed module kami. So students enjoy distinctive resources and variety of these resources which keep students engaged and interested throughout the discussion. So one strategy is using multimedia. That is why even before pandemic, usong-uso na sa atin yung ICT integration as part of our strategy. So multimedia can stimulate more than one senses or one sense at a time, as I mentioned. So giving students the ability to create and utilize different types of multimedia will create more collaborative classroom and allow students to communicate 
and actually apply what they are learning, enhancing the overall educational experience. Ito yung sinasabi natin kaninang uh, learning by doing or um, the, the way of putting into practice what we have learned. No Pragmatism. Pragmatic teaching is also very essential. Second, utilization of social media. Hindi na natin mapagkaila na bahagi na ng buhay natin at ng mga estudyante natin ang social media. Kagaya nga sa binanggit ko dati, sabi ni Bishop Ambo David, um, pinagbabawalan yung estudyante na gumamit ng cellphone sa classroom. Ngayon, ang classroom nila nasa loob ng cellphone. At paano nila yung ginagawa using social media? So, now social media is indeed uh, an essential strategy to develop an engaging classroom. So when this social media is used for teaching purposes, it turns out to be of great use. But of course, as parents and teachers, we should be very careful that these are not abused. Students love being social, collaborating and sharing experiences. Various experience, important aspects that are integral part of teaching like collaboration is happening actually in social media, they engage in social media. However, Again, let's suppose to be very critical and be very vigilant on the kind of content that our students are sharing. Uh, not just it is being used by all, but it also enables to keep all things checked in assigning tasks, assignments, and other class-related activities. Simple, since I, I cannot meet the students face-to-face, we use a simple platform of messenger group. So we try to introduce ourselves. I ask them to, to uh, send a picture and say something about themselves and what they expect of the class. So that is one way to engage students. And even other schools maybe in the Philippines are using this, not only in Facebook or Messenger, but other social media. Social media plays an important role when you talk about keeping guardians updated about students' performance and other school activities. So ang mga magulang at mga guru ay pwede na din itong gamitin no, as the way of feedback mechanism. Lalong-lalo na sa mga school na printed module yung gamit. So pwede nang gamitin yung messenger, yung Facebook for feedbacking or feedback mechanism. Various platforms like Facebook and Twitter had been used. And the good thing is for those who are researchers in in, in this group now, in mga kabibal na mga researcher, there is now a research method or research uh, design na pwede niyong gamitin yung social media, which is net, uh, netnography. Uh, this was actually introduced in one of the colloquium by uh, Asian Qualitative Research Association. Uh, thank you to um, Dr. Arceli for introducing this to us. No? Arceli Rosario of uh, ACRA. Third is using variety of resources. So now we said using uh, multimedia, using social media. Now let's try to use variety of resources para hindi lang iisa. So mix things up and add some engagement. This source of information is not just limited to, to books in the 21st century. Instead, you can use podcast, video, blogs, other resources to deliver knowledge. Again, Bibal Publication in, in their website have all these different modalities they have even uh, printed mode uh, uh, resources for teachers and for students alike uh, bival publication also have this online classroom that you can uh, use if you want to avail to to deliver instruction to your students a mix of various resources is enjoyed by students and is refreshing it caters to different learning needs remember the learning uh, styles of students as same one same resource may not be up for all. No, no one fits all. Fourth, making most of games and perks of gamification. So no doubts about the thing that how much love kids have for the game. So we know that students would love to, to, to play. But in, in teaching, we use this time games to discuss our, our topics, our content. Again, incorporating those educational uh, models and theories that we need to incorporate. No? Uh, kung babalikan natin yung TIPAC model, dapat yung, yung ipapalaro natin sa bata ay angkop doon sa topic na, na ating 
uh, ipapaliwanag. Students can get motivated by challenging each other and if done on a mobile device or laptop or tablets and are more likely to continue learning outside the classroom. But of course, um, teachers should always provide alternative to those students who have challenge with online mechanism. Gamification can be used as a framework for education that can be used anywhere and in any level of complexities. Of course, the, the games that we use should also respond to the grade level we are handling and again to the topic we are discussing. And last, the use of technology to empower students and reach out. So technology nurtures artistic expression. Engaged students are, are those who are able to express opinions and just possibly receive wisdom. Again, the cone of experiences said that when students are only reading, are only listening, there is a more likely a bigger chances of forgetting. But when students are engaged, they are asked to participate using technology, they are empowered and later on they are able to share. So how do you know that the students learn? When students are able to translate the knowledge that they learned from the teachers in their own way, particularly in the day-to-day -day lives. So apart from this, you can help students reach out and learn more. So social media helps you to connect to people around the world and you can get in touch with experts. So this is what uh, technology can do to us, teachers and parents, to engage our students in online modality. So in closing, Using technology to increase efficiency is important, particularly in areas with the capacity to do online modalities. However, teachers should also empower learners and communities to create positive learning environment in which the student can grow, including the students who are digitally challenged, including those areas with a scarcity of learning, uh, of scarcity of connection. So palagi tayo dapat handa na mayroon tayo palaging alternative just like what the Department of Education is doing. So for those schools who cannot provide online modality, there is this distance printed modules as an alternative. Okay? So it should not sacrifice the quality but continue to provide equal opportunities. So according to George Ching, uh, the use of technology should not sacrifice the quality of education but provide equal opportunities to all especially the marginalized and vulnerable sectors of our students so new normal should not always be easy and technology is not always for all especially for those who are challenged but one that is dependent on the needs of its learning community so our, our modality, our pedagogy, our content, and, our, and the kind of technology that we use should always be anchored to our students. That is why assessment, the preliminary assessment is always important. That is why when the Department of Education was presenting to us the learning continuity plan, and now they are trying to enhance teachers through this learning uh, delivery modalities, it's always emphasize that the kind of de delivery of instruction of pedagogy that we are using should be contextualized to the needs of our students okay so um i think i i, I will end my presentation there and if you have some uh questions like uh, contact me through my email account uh, Leonilo Capulso, 2017 at gmail.com and my WhatsApp number, 0933-556-4886. Um, we don't have the luxury of time. I think we, we could discuss more in the coming days. But uh, in closing, always remember that whatever modalities we are using, we should always keep in mind that our main concern is to provide quality education to our students regardless of modality. This is our desire to support the Department of Education so long edukalidad and providing quality education for our higher education institution learners. So once again, mga kavibal, maraming salamat sa inyong pakikinig. Magandang umaga sa lahat. Ma'am?
there we have it. In behalf of Ibal Group Incorporated, I would like to thank our speaker for today for this eye-opening and insightful learning session. It is an honor to have you with us today, sir. And to all our Kavibal viewers, all thanks to you for your continuous patronage to our daily learning session. Don't forget to register to get your e-certificate of participation. Also, we encourage you to subscribe and watch on our official Vibao Facebook and YouTube channel. Muli, maraming salamat at magandang araw sa ating lahat.